today's presentation is dealing with mental health in sports, and we will focus on the athlete and coach relationship and how to interact with an athlete. Our objective is to provide information to UNT coaches and trainers about how to identify an athlete with a mental health problem, where to refer them for medical and counseling evaluation, and provide a unique tool for coaches, for coaches to teach their athletes that can enhance their ability to cope with stress and anxiety. So to put mental disorders in focus, we're gonna, focus, we're gonna look specifically at anxiety and depression since those are the two uh, most prevalent mental disorders in NCAA athletes. We have uh, uh, data that looks at prevalence at 21% for depression, uh, which is similar to the non-athlete population. Uh, suicide uh, is uh, overall considered to be like 0.93 per 100,000 athletes per year based on a nine-year retrospective cohort study of NCAA athletes, and the risk does appear to be higher in males than in females. Anxiety disorders, which include panic attacks, state anxiety, and general anxiety disorder, uh, which is more associated with trade anxiety, uh, prevalence for those is 22 to 37 percent in college athletes, which elevated from the 22 to 28 percent that's seen in non-athletes in the state anxiety survey. And there's comorbidity in, or over between both disorder about 50%. So 50% of patients that present themselves at a clinic for treatment for depression also have anxiety. So how does this relate to sports performance? Uh, there's a lot of evidence done by Hannon on the individual, individualized zone of optimal functioning and with the cusp catastrophe model that demonstrate the drawbacks and benefits of too little and too much anxiety. So if an athlete has elevated anxiety, we wanna make sure to get that under control and identify it where it's occurring. All right, now we want to uh, set you guys up with a protocol to help you guys as trainers and coaches to uh, approach your athletes. So we're gonna go over uh, four steps to recognize, reach out, refer, and remain supportive. Uh, first is recognize. Uh, so we're going to go over some triggers and symptoms uh, that uh, athletes might experience. So some triggers are transitioning to college, especially our incoming freshman or a transfer student, uh, transferring from one university to another, small town to big town. Uh, injury, uh, athletes suffer injury throughout the season or off season. Um, so that can cause some anxiety or depression because they're not able to compete where they want to or they're not able to be with the team at practice. Uh, pressures to perform, so coming from a high performance last year, NCAA champion, and then just having to keep that drive going uh, to be back there again the following year and maintain uh, scholarship status, so that could be with grades or your athletic performance and other additional pressures such as personal relationships and financial issues. Um, possible signs could be negative self-talk, overuse injuries, fatigue, uh, social withdrawal from the team, or mood swings during practice. So a way that we can recognize these issues in athletes in addition to uh, just observance through practice and competition by coaches and trainers is to use a, a series of batteries and questionnaires in order to identify uh, these traits. Uh, these include the uh, depression, anxiety, and stress scales, which is a series of questions that focuses on experiences and feelings within the last seven day period. The sport anxiety scale, which is a 21 item measure examining athletes self-reported anxiety and uh, the Competition Anxiety Inventory 2 Revised, which is a 17-item measure focusing on state anxiety that's uh, revised to evaluate self-confidence of the athlete. And this isn't uh, all of the inventories that are available, just an example of the types that could be used and implemented into a program. All right, after you recognize maybe an athletes having some troubles, we want you guys to reach out. Uh, first step is initiating conversation. So. Just be like, hey, uh, you're looking a little down out there, you look a little distracted, everything okay, how's things that, uh, in life or school. Uh, then demonstrate active listening skills, 
so really make sure you're listening to them and caring uh, for what they're saying so they don't feel discouraged of opening up to you and um, coming to you if there actually is a problem or they need help with something. And just establishing that trust. So that goes with active listening skills so the athlete knows that you're a reliable resource and you're there for the benefit of them and not just like they are a person to you instead of just an athlete. Uh, some resources that we have at UNT is the uh, Center of Sports Psychology um, ran by Dr. Petrie, uh, Sports Nutrition uh, ran by Charles Ashford, uh, and then we have also have clinics at our UNT Health and Wellness Center for psychiatric services and dietitians, and we also have counseling and testing services at UNT. And remain supportive, so after you refer an athlete to one of the resources, just keep it in touch with the athlete, uh, still interacting with them, maybe call them in to your office, be like, hey, you want to talk for a little bit, or just walking up to them at practice when they're resting in between reps or plays, be like, hey, how's things going? Uh, so just remain that, remain that contact, just so the athlete knows that you care about them and you want the best for them so they can pursue their athletic career uh, healthy. Okay. So with the utility of this meditation protocol that we're going to use kind of before we get to that referral status, we're going to use this utility of meditation as a tool to cope with trait and state anxiety. So um, notice that this should really not be used as more of a replacement for psychotherapy and antidepressants without really physician approval, but it would just be another tool to use. So there's evidence that suggests that mindfulness meditation improves the symptoms of that general anxiety that we kind of referred to back in the beginning stages, which is the trait anxiety we were, had mentioned. Um, so there's also ways that to modify, this meditation tool can help modify trait anxiety to improve that state anxiety that we have in athletes. Um, there's also evidence that suggests um, that acute favorable changes in physiological markers related to stress occurs. So those physiological markers that we're talking about is that cortisol that we get um, whenever we're um, under physiological stress. Um, and so in order for us to kind of use that, we're using the CSAI to our scores of the state anxiety, which we Spinch Thur had mentioned with the batteries and questionnaires that we wanted to use. Um, and this could help modify state anxiety to improve performance and reduce negative physiological consequences of the stress. So um, the meditation um, as a preventative measure, here's an example, high-performing athletes so meditation as a preventative measure, and here are some examples. So there are some high-performing athletes out there who kind of engage in just regular meditation. Just to name a few, here's Phil Jackson in the 1990s with his Chicago Bulls, and that was kind of referenced on an Oprah episode, so we kind of went over some of that stuff. LeBron James, a major name in basketball, he uses the calm meditation. Um, with his, uh, it was mentioned in like the Tim Ferriss podcast, and there was an interview with LeBron James and with his trainer, Mike uh, Manchus, and they just kind of went over what he uses, and I think that's pretty relevant with this that we're using. Uh, also, other big names that we've kind of heard, Kobe Bryant, Carly Lloyd, uh, Stephen Cur Steph Curry, um, Derek Jeter, and Joe Namath, just to name a few people who use these measures. Okay. Um, so, just to get like a team-specific example, I think we implemented just to use a general swim team uh, mainly just to use like an in-season and off-season kind of record of when we can use these questionnaires, when we would implement the meditation, and how we can kind of keep track of if the meditation is actually working and how we can kind of like single or figure out different athletes with these depressive and anxiety problems. Um, so in-season we decided to kind of pick from that table of uh, batteries and questionnaires by using the CSAI2R and the DASS21 probably just once a month just to keep up that frequency, just to check in with the athlete. Um, and then for the meditation protocol that we have, we would perform just one time a week as a team before practice and then before all scheduled competitions just to keep it kind of consistent and make sure that we're kind of engaging these athletes in this mindset with this meditation. 
Um, it'll encourage athletes to meditate every morning, and you, we can have the coach kind of implement that. And um, just to like get into this mode of using these, we can, we suggested that we would use like mobile apps such as the Headspace, Calm, and Oak, just like some of these other high-performing athletes that we've seen. They've used some of these apps to help them. Um, and then in the off season, whenever we're not really in that collegiate competitive state and kind of in that two month period of when, uh, you know, you kind of come off of your training, serious intensive training or whatnot, uh, we can go back with that same question of the CSAI 2R and DASS 21 conducted at the beginning of an office season and then at the end of the off season, just to get a little check of maybe. Establish um, a baseline. Right, and we can establish a baseline um, and then just for the medication, just try to encourage the athletes to maintain at least a one-time weekly frequency of implementing this meditation protocol. Um, what this really will do is just keep track of the individual performance and psychological inventories, as well as athlete engagement in meditation, just to modify and modify the meditation schedule or use a mobile app selection if needed. If an athlete begins to show the symptoms of depression, and we can just refer to a sports psychology or a counseling department. So now we're going to begin our meditation activity, which is based off of a uh, physician at the Veterans Health Administration at the University of Wisconsin, and it's been modified from its original format for concise wording and more appropriate classroom application. Okay.